Hi, this is Numeric Citizen. For today's video, a word about the latest release of Craft, the last one for this year, and also how to create a web clipper using the utility name PopClip. In this last release of Craft for 2022, uh, there is two highlights I want to uh, talk about. The first thing is they added the possibility to set the first row of a table as a header row. So what this means is that if you have a table with a lot of data and you want to sort on one of the columns, then if you sort and you have set a header row, then the header row will stay fixed at the top of the table. So you won't miss the actual table content. The problem is that why did they, they didn't include the footer option too. So uh, you can be sorting a whole bunch of data and uh, you have a summary line at the bottom and maybe you don't want to all this to be sort uh, together. So uh, as you do that uh, for the header row, you come over here, you select uh, the table actually. And then if you go on the uh, setting for the table style, you will see that there is a new option for the header row. Just selecting that and you'll see that there is a, a bolder line, separator line here to show that uh, this is actually the, the header row. Uh, so again, there is no way to set a footer row which could have been done uh, pretty easily within this interface. And you can also set the same thing for header row like this. If you have a labels on the right, on the left side of a table, and if you sort the column, then the header on the, um, on the left side will stay there. It won't be part with this, the, the sorting option. So this is something pretty basic that we, we, we have in uh, Excel, for example. So that's the one thing they, they, they changed in this uh, release. And the other thing is they did a few tweaks, uh, one tweak uh, with the assistant, the Craft AI assistant. So let's invoke the assistant there. Um, as you can see, there is a something uh, usual, but if we click on this ellipsis here, then you'll see uh, the actual uh, usage uh, of the assistant. So the number of requests, number of requests remaining, and the num maximum number of requests that I have for a 30-day uh, period. So I have a 1000 because I'm subscribing to the business plan and the reset will happen on the, on the, on the January 15 of next year. So that's something that we didn't have uh, before. So that's the highlight for this release version 2.4.1. It's a pretty, uh, a minor release if you ask me, but that's it for this year. And now let's talk about creating a web clipper using PopClip. Uh, if you don't know PopClip, uh, Pop uh, you should uh, take a look at this. Uh, I'll share the uh, link in the uh, video description. Uh, it's a utility which works on macOS only, where uh, anything you have in the document or web page uh, involving text, uh, if I click on this uh, word here, or if I click on this, phrase here. Uh, usually we get to see a pop-up like this one. Uh, you may already have seen this uh, specific pop-up in my past videos because I'm uh, using PopClip uh, a lot. And this bar there is fully uh, customizable with a lot of different uh, uh, plugins or module that you can configure within uh, PopClip. So as an example, if I go in the uh, menu bar, I can see here that PopClip is on and that I have a lot of options that I have configured and I can change the order of that. I can add new one uh, from the web. So that's really a powerful and uh, a nifty uh, utility that we can use on the Mac. So using PopClip, uh, I can make sure that I can, uh, I can set PopClip to launch a shortcut. And the shortcut will take the actual web page and the selected uh, portion of text within the web page, and it will create a, a an entry or a, a series of block uh, in a craft uh, 
and it will create kind of a a, a clip a clip of this content within craft so I'll, I'll show you how it works uh, uh, for an example so let's say I'm looking at a, an article that I find interesting something about uh, Elon Musk and uh, the banning of uh, Mastodon on Twitter so if I want to select this text here I can just select the text right there and just clicking at this uh, little icon there which I, I named the uh, quick graph clip if I select that it will launch a shortcut then it will bring me to uh, the craft page where I want this to be saved so as you can see you have the date you have the text that I selected in the page there is a place here where I can enter my own take on this uh, on this portion of this clipping and then I have the source the the title of the article I was uh, looking and the actual reference as a, a bookmark so after that I can do whatever I want with that so it's pretty uh, uh, useful to use when you are browsing the web uh, and you want to save a lot of uh, uh, clips within your craft uh, environment so how does, does it work if I go in the uh, in the shortcut here, that's the shortcut that it, it's pretty simple. What I'm doing is that I'm getting the text, the selected text as an input, and I put that in a variable. And then there's uh, the current date that I'm getting. And then also I'll get the actual uh, web page that I'm uh, currently uh, browsing with within Safari. And then I'm building the actual content that will be inserted at the end of a specific a document within a specific space within craft and it's done with this uh, 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 this action here when I'm, I'm saying that I want to add this this block of text that was constructed before with this section here uh, from the and I want to add that to a page which is named from web pages in this specific uh, space within my craft environment and now the way to tell PopClip to launch this specific uh, shortcut, which, which is named PopClip to Craft, is by doing that here. So I have this uh, small text where when I'm selecting this text within, uh, uh, within with the, uh, the, the cursor, you'll see that there is a specific section called install in extension and I, I've done that before and it's creating a, uh, if I look at this, I go back in the uh, web page for that to, to work, if I again do that, you'll see that there is a little icon there, here, this is a kind of a clipping thing so how it is made is uh, simply by naming the actual uh, uh, module that I'm inserting within a pop clip there is the actual symbol name I want to use that so if you have symbols SF install on your machine you can then refer to that and use this to actually get the the naming of this specific icon and then uh, also the, the, the name of the shortcut that should be invoke, invoke uh, with by uh, PopClip. So it's pretty simple to do. Once it's done, uh, you can then, if I go in the, uh, again, in the, um, in the uh, configuration of PopClip, I can change the order where I want to see this uh, app appearing. So let's say I want to bring it closer to, to this and right there so if I again go there I should see that my uh, icon my clipping icon is right there just beneath the uh, copy and the actual word count and the uh, characters count so this is how I'm using pop clip with a shortcut to create a kind of a special uh, web clipper with foreground so that's it for this video. This is the last one of this year. Uh, I'll see you uh, at the beginning of January in, uh, for next year. Uh, thanks for being there. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you get uh, notified when the next video uh, will be published in early January. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for being there. Um, I hope you like this video and uh, you learned something. And again, happy holidays, happy new year, and see you guys. Bye.